بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الحبت في الله this is the fourth sitting in going over Dr. Saleh Asari's uh, very brief explanation of Nawah al Islam or the ten nullifiers of faith and may Allah have mercy upon him and mercy upon Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala Imam uh, Muhammad al-Mujaddid rahmatullah alayhi and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the Muslims in general and the ulama specifically especially those ulama who came before us and left behind the uh, treasures that they left behind of knowledge so we reach the second uh, nullifier of faith and Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned he said Athani min ja'ala baynahu wa bayna Allahi al-wasa'id yad'uhum wa yas'aluhum wa yatawakkalu alayhim kafra ijma'in he said the second nullifier of faith is that whoever makes between him and Allah an, inters, uh, an intermediary or inter, uh, interceder or inter, makes some sort of intercession and supplicates to them, asks them, and relies upon them, you know, puts their full trust in them then they have disbelief and this is in accordance with the consensus of Muslim scholars so setting up intermediaries between a person and the law is kufr it's disbelief calling upon them seeking their intercession and depending upon them those who do this are taking associates with the law and this is shirk uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, then set not up rivals unto Allah in worship while you know that he alone has the right to be worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in Surah Al-Baqarah in verse uh, 22 فَلَا تَجْعَلِ لِلَّهِ and دَانِ وَإِنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلَا تَجْعَلُ لِلَّهِ or وَلَا تَجْعَلُ لِلَّهِ and دَانِ وَإِنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ He says and do not associate you know partners or make rivals with Allah and you know you know, you know this is uh, not permissible. Allah is the only one worthy of worship. Uh, another principle that the ulama mentioned, first we'll, we'll finish, uh, and also evidence to support this, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, which sin is the gravest? He ﷺ said, that you set up rivals unto Allah, despite the fact that He's created you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem and call not, other, call not on other than Allah, any that will neither profit you nor hurt you but if in case you did so you shall certainly be of the valimin those who commit shirk so letting us know shirk is dhulm shirk is, uh, is, is a type of oppression and transgression going beyond the bounds and the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something important about this these setting up these intermediaries between oneself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, related to this principle La ilaha illallah wa ahtala shariqa la la muqa la 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 Something pertinent to these, uh, to this uh, a relevant qaida or principle also that the ulama mention is they say that this is because the first principle was shirk was talking about shirk and we even mentioned as an example of setting up an interceder or intercession between oneself and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is shirk the second principle that Muhammad ibn al-Lahab Imam uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned was setting up intermediaries between a person and Allah and saying that that, that was disbelief by ijma of the ulama and so this is a case of mentioning uh, al-khas bad al-am or something specific 
after mentioning the general principle. So, meaning, how does that apply to what we're talking about? The first thing he said, shirk in the worship of Allah, that this is the first naqid min the waqid al-Islam. This is the first nullifier of faith. Then he said the second, setting up intermediaries between a person and Allah is kufr. That is actually a type of shirk, so it's not really separate. But, mentioning, he, he mentioned the first, it was shirk in general, that this is something, the major shirk takes you out of the fold of Islam. Then the second principle, the second naqid he mentioned was a specific type of shirk. So here, now he's mentioned the khas bad al-am, something specific after the general principle, which, it, you know, you'll find this mentioned in ayats in the Quran like this and and maybe some of the, the texts or maybe even some some nusus of the sunnah that sometimes something is mentioned uh, in general and then Allah will bring the further details in another ayat clarifying that or as another type of that particular uh, thing that was being mentioned and so this was uh, the case here Imam Muhammad ibn Dhuhab rahimahullah ta'ala was mentioning in the first principle that shirk in general uh, is associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is one of the nullifiers of faith and then the second nullifier is setting up intermediaries between a person and Allah you know in your in your worship so that means a person who raises their hands and goes to the graves seeking intercession from the dead in the graves who could not help themselves who could not deter their death who could not postpone their death who could not bring themselves back to life so who cannot hear you or support you in any way, shape, or form, or matter, nor can they really harm you, but worshiping them will harm you. So in a sense, if you take them as tagut and they were pleased with this kind of thing, then this can actually hurt you. So that is a way in which it is possible that they can hurt you, or in fact, that probably more accurately, that you hurt yourself. So shirk is dharam. It is the most harmful thing. It is setting up and associating a partner uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from any and all forms of shirk and kufr. And with that, uh, I think we'll leave that naqid. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.